Yo, everybody, it is 12.30 it's in the Central Time Zone. Shut up, East Coasters. We know what time it is. 12.30, game ended right on time, right on cue, and we got seven top 25 upsets tonight. <laughs> One of them just finished. Yeah, that's the beauty of actually staying up and watching college football. AP boaters, co coaches, pole boaters, media guys, you know. Y'all need to learn how to, you know, if you love the game, you need to wake up and stay awake for the entire duration of these games. So let's get into it. Friday night was a weird, weird night. Let me tell you, night. Let me tell you, late Friday night. We had Cal, Oregon, Chase Garbers was playing lights out in this game against an Oregon team that was just struggling, struggling, until Kayvon Thibodeau returned in the second half. He had a targeting call against him in the Stanford game, and he was able to come back in the second half. And Travis Dye was running, you know, all over this Cal defense, and a, a clutch Clutch drive by Anthony Brown was able to take care of a cow, take them out, and put the cow bears at one and five. And now Oregon, you know, tough tests remain for the back next week. We'll be talking about their toughest, one of their toughest tests remaining in the Pac-12, um, which will be their game against UCLA. That'll be one of my six games next week, Big Six for next weekend. So don't miss. Tuesday, we go over all that. San Diego State, San Jose State, on the other hand, was an absolutely atrocious game. We're talking missed kicks. We're talking backup quarterback for San Diego State, Lucas Johnson, tossing a couple touchdowns. But here's the kicker this was in overtime. Overtime. And this was after Nick Nash, the backup. You know, for San Jose State, who's been thrust into the starting role through a bad interception late in overtime. Uh, this was just a bad game. This was 6-6 six to six until we got to the end of regulation. My goodness, this game was rough. Whew, boy. So let's move on. Let's move on past all that to noon Eastern on Saturday. So let's go through all of these big games here. Um, UCF Cincinnati, really nothing to talk about here. Jerome Floor just flexes his muscles all over UCF. Ran for four touchdowns. The defense easily took care of the Knights, put them away early. Nothing really to say here. You know, it's a shame. You know, UCF was rattled by injuries and stuff throughout the early parts of the season because we could have really seen this team, you know, you know, go at it. But it's unfortunate. Can't say that now. And UCF got smacked by Cincinnati. Smacked around like they were nobody's business. It's unfortunate for them. Texas A&M, Missouri also, you know, Acne and Spiller, and they also ran for, what, 290? And I believe I said, said, his, said his name wrong. I'm sorry. I have no idea how you say his name. Uh, the other running back for Texas a &M. I know Isaiah Spiller, but I don't know how you say the other running back's name. But they ran for 290 all over the Missouri defense. Take care of business there. You know, Texas a &M has a favorable road for them for the next couple weeks, I believe. So that's going to be good there for them. Michigan State struggled with Indiana. They struggled with the Hoos, the Hoosiers of Indiana. You know, with Tuttle, you had quarterback, backing up for Michael Penix. And, I mean, you know, Peyton Thorne didn't, didn't throw the ball too well. Kenneth Walker didn't even have 100 yards. But the defense was able to take care of things by forcing field goals, forcing well, at least three interceptions. Uh, but they just were able to put the Hoosiers away, put them away. They only won by five. They get to race into the bye week, ready for Michigan, Penn State, and Ohio State soon. So congrats to the Spartans. They take care of business. You know, it wasn't pretty, but they took care of business, and they get to, you know, what, 7-0. and Yeah, it's going to be a... Going to be an interesting next month for the Spartans, I'll tell you that much. We'll see them again, we'll see them again soon. Oklahoma State, Texas, let me tell you, this was, this had to have been a plan by Mike Gundy. 
because it worked. You know, Oklahoma State, you know, was chipping away at the horns on defense, you know, after B. John Robinson ran for three touchdowns and Casey Thompson, you know, had a good had a good, you know, had a good first drive. But then after that, once Thompson threw that pick six, things started to unravel. And the second half, especially the fourth quarter, in which, you know, Texas blew the lead again. They blew it again. We're talking Jalen Warren ran for nearly 200 yards. Spencer Sanders got two touchdowns. You know, Spence, you know Sanders didn't look too good out there, but he got some kind of magic. He, he got some kind of voodoo, some kind of, you know, something in him said, we're going to get this win today, and we're going to stay undefeated. And that's exactly what Oklahoma State will do. Texas will be dropping right out the top 25, right then and there. You know, Arch Manning came to, to this game, too. I mean, this is just disappointing for Sark and company. This is another loss that should have been avoided for Texas, and yet the defense collapsed. The offense couldn't get the ball to me, John. He only had 21 carries. You know, I don't think he really had any in the second half. In fact, again, one yard in the fourth quarter. One. One yard. I am beyond disappointed. It seems my prediction for four losses for Texas is coming more and more true each, each and every day. Oh my goodness, man. It's unfortunate. Auburn, Arkansas, on the other hand, also a weird one because this is Bo Nix we're talking about here. Like, some weeks this man plays like absolute garbage. And now this week against Arkansas, he decides to play lights out tossing a couple touchdowns. I mean, this is completely entertaining. He caught, tosses a couple touchdowns. The Auburn defense was able to shut down Arkansas for most of this game. And, and you know, Arkansas, you know, now they have three losses. You know, and again, this, the, the hardest part of Arkansas' schedule looks like it's over, but it could, but thanks to this next game we're going to talk about, LSU Florida, in which Florida will also get out the top 25. They're going to get out the top 25 real quick because they commit four turnovers. Ran the ball for only, what, 138 yards? But, I mean, again, you know, there was a Hail Mary in this game that was somehow caught. But the big one for LSU was Tyrion Davis Price running for 287 yards? I believe that was a single season record for LSU, or like a yeah, some type of rushing record for LSU. Three touchdowns. It becomes a shootout that LSU wins. You know, Emory Jones gets benched in favor of Anthony Richardson. He, Richardson still threw two interceptions. Jones threw two interceptions. At Florida, their SEC East hopes have been crushed just like that. Now you can't really anticipate Georgia, the Georgia game going too well anymore. Can you now, Gators? It's been a rough season for LSU, you know, with all the stuff about Ed Ogeron probably being, you know, they're, they're probably separating at the end of the season. But I mean, for Florida, this is just a bad look for them. Bad look for the Gators. Another drop all the way out of the top 25 just like that. Backbreaking losses. This is this is a terrible loss. Terrible loss for the Gators. Let's move on. Let's move on. 3:30 Eastern. That's right. Kentucky, Georgia. This was the big one. Now I said, you know, I said that this game was going to be a lot closer than the score indicated, and that turned out to not be the case. Unfortunately, Kentucky couldn't even do anything on offense. We're talking they couldn't run the ball against this Georgia front. We're talking Levis, you know, had only, what, 190-something yards. He was under 200 yards. He threw it 42 times, but yet he was under 200 yards. Kentucky just couldn't get the run going. Brock Bowers, on the other hand, was catching touchdowns from Stetson Bennett. Caught two of them. Stetson Bennett may have just taken the job away from JT Daniels, in all honesty. Georgia has pretty much cemented that they are the number one team in the country. 
as we've all we've all expected that they're done. We've all said, and they are now. But we can really say it now. This is the number one team in the country, and with the way the SEC East has been going, you know, there's not a lot left for Georgia to do. You know, there's not a lot of games left in the regular season. Alabama or potentially Ole Miss is awaiting them, or somebody else from the SEC West is awaiting the Georgia Bulldogs. You know, they pretty much clinched the East right now in this game in a dominating fashion against Kentucky. What a performance by Georgia again. BYU Baylor, on the other hand, Baylor is going to get themselves to the top 25. They're going to get in there. They finally get their, they're finally going to get their wish because of running for over 300 yards against BYU. Even though Jaron Hall may have exposed this Baylor defense a little bit, you know, at least the passing defense by torching him for 300 plus yards as well, but Baylor controlled this game from start to finish. 38-24 from start to finish, 300 rushing yards. BYU, you know, disappointing last couple weeks for them. You know, they lost two straight games, and they and the running defense was just not good in both of these games. I mean, especially this game here. You can't allow 300 yards plus and expect to be ranked. And, you know, they, this team may be having, you know, they'll have, I assume, you know, they could get it back together, but not this week. Um, fortunately, BYU fans, you guys might be dropping out the top 25 as well. So, it is what it is there. But the big one, the biggest upset of the day, Purdue. Iowa. Y'all remember when Purdue beat Ohio State, right? Yeah. Same thing happened here. David Bell. Remember that name? Tight end for Purdue. Torched this Iowa defense. 240 yards on 11 catches. And this offense under Spencer Petrus, they've collapsed for Iowa. They've collapsed completely like this offense looked terrible defense you know was getting torched in it, it like we all thought this was the best defense in the country they got torched we're talking Purdue was what nine for 13 on third downs nine for 13 I get it Iowa had injuries on the defensive side of things you know they've had some injuries but Still, this was a dominant defense for the Hawkeyes, and yet, here we are with Iowa being knocked off just like that from the unbeatens. Now, still a little bit fishy because, you know, again, Iowa has one of the better wins of the season in beating Penn State. And, you know, Penn State and Iowa fans are going to go back and forth for the next couple weeks about it, you know, with, with the injuries and stuff like that, you know. But Iowa, you know, now their path to the Big Ten West title gets a little bit murkier. You know, they have to play a lot better than this if they want to get to the Big Ten title game. You know, Purdue, again, I told y'all, Purdue was a weird team. They had a weird win, and they had some weird losses. And this, this Purdue team was ready to strike, and they struck today. They struck in a great way, I'll tell you that much. Let's move on to the seven Eastern games here. These are some of the last games of the night, and big one here, TCU Oklahoma. This was a game where we didn't know who the starter would be coming in, but guess who came in and said, we all pretty much knew who it was going to be, and that was Caleb Williams. You know, he he did absolutely wonderful out there for Oklahoma. He put this offense on his back. Five touchdowns in this game. Three to Hazelwood. And yet, yet, I am not happy with this Oklahoma defense. You don't let Max Duggan torch you for four touchdowns and no picks. Yeah, sure, Caleb Williams pretty much put this TCU team away on his own. But still, this defense... It's not good, you know, not good at all. You know, you have Kansas and you have Texas Tech coming up, you know, Oklahoma. But November, November is not going to be pretty 
if this defense continues to look like this. You know, Oklahoma State, Baylor, and Iowa State are awaiting you. Okay? They're awaiting you. You need to get this defense together real quick. And, you know, we could bring out the Texas-Kansas memes just for y'all. Just for y'all, too. Do you want that? I don't think y'all want that. Play better next week, okay? On defense. We're talking defense. When I talk about offense, we can see. And I don't know where people are coming from with Caleb Williams or Heisman all of a sudden. Stop it. He's only played, you know, a game and a half. Stop it. Stop that right now. How about the uh, how about one of the other Heisman favorites, Bryce Young? Four touchdowns once again. And I mean, it, it doesn't really feel like that this man has been throwing four touchdowns in every game, but that's exactly what he's been doing. And he tosses another four touchdowns. And I thought Mississippi State would do a little bit better than this, but apparently no, they did not. You know, they, they still threw for 300 yards, which tells me that Alabama still hasn't improved their pass defense at all. You know, and Alabama got three interceptions and were able to dominate Mississippi State for the most part 49-9, to nine, but you can't allow 300 passing yards like that. I don't, you know, it's not a good look, you know, especially, you know, Alabama still has tough tests left in the SEC. You know, the LSU has proven now that they're not a pushover. You know, Auburn, at the end of the season, Arkansas, right there, you know, but for the most part, it seems like Alabama's gotten it together. Tennessee, too, and we'll talk about Tennessee right now, actually. As Ole Miss-Tennessee was a statement game, and it may have honestly, you know, we've been talking about Matt Corral for weeks now as the Heisman favorite, along with Bryce Young. But, I mean, nobody, I mean, nobody really talks. No, people say stuff about Bryce Young, but they don't really care. Uh, I think more people care about Matt Corral winning the Heisman, and that's exactly, you know, what this type of performance does in a hostile environment, a beyond hostile environment. Remember, Lane Kiffin was Tennessee's head coach at one point. And the end of this game, but oh, first let's talk about Corral's stats and also Hendon Hooker because he, both these players, both these quarterbacks balled out in this game. Let me tell you. I mean, Hendon Hooker was throwing the ball well, running the ball well. Yeah, he Hendon Hooker had over 100 yards rushing, over 200 yards passing. Corral had nearly 200 rushing and threw for 200 plus by himself. That that's how good Matt Corral has been. And you know, Ole Miss, Ole Miss now, you know, they still have some tough tests remaining as well, and they're still behind Alabama right now. But I mean, hey. Ole Miss is having a magical season by far, and the way this game ended was beyond insanity. You know, a fourth down that, for some reason, you know, just didn't have the right camera angles to it. And Tennessee was short. You know, I presumed that they were just a bit short, maybe like a foot or two short, but not that short. You know. We're not talking like a whole yard short. It was very, very close, and we could tell. Nobody could tell from the camera angles because there wasn't a camera angle on the other side of the field. So, you know, to where we could see, you know, um, the receiver that caught it for Tennessee. And the fans in the stands decide to throw things. We're talking bait pens, water bottles. Who drinks the sunny? Disgusting water. A whole bottle of mustard, a golf ball, which Lane Kiffin even catches. And I mean, this game was just insane. In fact, Joe Milton came in at the end of the game after Andrew Dunker got hurt again. And there were so many injuries in this game. You know, I'm not sure if all these were legitimate. I think some of these were faked to stop the momentum of Tennessee or to stop the momentum of Ole Miss. This game was nearly five hours including the 20 minute delay to get all the trash up off the field my god what a what a what a crazy game this was Ole Miss was able to take down Tennessee put them in their place now the ball nation they gotta live with another L for another week 
And well, speaking of a team that's going to be living with something good, you know, something real good for another week, not, not an L, we're talking NC State. Oh my goodness, what a third quarter by NC State. This was one of the strongest third quarters I've ever seen in my entire life. Only watched a little bit of this third quarter, by the way, uh, before I had to go back to Ole Miss, Tennessee. You know, but we're talking Boston College's punter had a bad snap, and it it was a fumble recovery for a touchdown. We're talking a bad pick by Russell, Boston College's backup quarterback who did not play very well. In fact, he had under 200 yards passing himself. And Boston College, again, I talked about it in my preview. They needed their running game, and that running game was not there. The offensive line was getting dominated by NC State. Devin Leary had three touchdowns in this game, three TD passes. But NC State was able to take care of business, blow out Boston College just like that. Boston College has lost two straight. Remember, we thought this team was going to be you know, ranked at some point, you know. Uh, I initially thought this team was going to be ranked at some point, you know, but I guess not now. Not now. And NC State, they're in the driver's seat in the ACC Atlantic. They're in the driver's seat now. You know who's also in the driver's seat? Utah. The Pac-12 South. Yeah, Arizona State, you know, yeah, I, I I don't know Arizona State. This was this was bad. This was bad. A terrible performance by the Sun Devils. A terrible performance, you know, allowing you know from Herb Edwards allowing this to happen. You know, Utah has gone through so much in the past couple of days. A couple of players have died. Um, you know, you know, a couple of players have indeed passed on. You know, over the past couple of weeks, and Utah has been honoring and celebrating their lives. You know, over the lives that they've had, and Utah came in with this determination. You know, they beat up on USC, and they beat Arizona State just like that with a second half by Cam Rising that you could not believe. You could not believe that this happened, but it happened. It really, really happened. I mean, it seemed that Jaden Daniels was going to, you know, he, he, he in this Arizona State defense, you know, Daniels got two touchdowns, and, you know, the defense got a couple interceptions in the first half, but the second half completely changed, and Cam Rising, you know, you know, they were, Utah was down 21-7, to and they scored 28 unanswered points. 28 28 unanswered points. Four huge drives in which Arizona State got bullied by the wide receivers and tight ends of the Utes. Got bullied on the offensive side of the line in which they were going backwards with penalties, had bad play calling, and Arizona State now, now those criticisms that were raised a couple weeks ago, you can put those criticisms in bed because those criticisms were right. Arizona State still has a shot at the Pac-12 South, still has a shot at the Pac-12 Championship game. But they're behind Utah now, and the schedule does not get easier for both of these teams. Not easy for both of these teams, the Pac-12. The Pac-12, everybody except Oregon has two losses now. That's how we end tonight. The, pet, the top 25 is going to be shaken up in a way that, you know, in a way that's going to be like, man, we're going we're gonna to let these teams in, you know, because of how crazy the season has been. I hear some meep meeps in the background. I bet I bet there's some meep meeps in the background ready to get into the top 25. I'm talking about you, UTSA. Yeah. Y'all can come on in. What about a little... A little falcon that flew, you know, in a little fighter jet. Maybe you, maybe you Air Force, you guys can come on in. Who else wants to come into the top 25? Because I, I can guarantee you Auburn will probably get themselves back in, by the way. I don't, that's, what's just, that's just what I'm thinking. But we'll talk about all the top 25 games for next week. Because next week, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> oh boy, oh, this is the greatest weekend 
of bad games that we're ever going to see. Oh yes, I'm loving this. I'm going to love every second of this. You know, for next week. I mean, there was all sorts of crazy plays from this weekend as well that I, that I've retweeted and stuff like that too. Like, a, like a player in a D3 game. You know, just like he, I don't know what was wrong with him. He just, he just did not spike the ball. He kneeled it too. He kneeled the ball. He kneeled it, and time ran out. Unfortunate there. And I think one of the schools was called Lacrosse. Hey, that's what's up, though. Um, but yeah, next week is going to be very interesting with a Wednesday night, Thursday night, and then a whole Saturday. We're going to end it early Saturday, so that means the video will be coming early Saturday night. Oh, yes, we're going to have another early Saturday night video, hopefully. Hopefully this comes out before, you know, noon next, or rather, not noon, midnight next Saturday. The recap for next Saturday. Preview for next week will be Tuesday, Sunday. There is nothing for me to talk about because there's going to be this video, obviously. Um, Monday, NFL recap. Tuesday, college football preview. Wednesday, crown jewel predictions. Thursday, NFL stuff. And then that's it until Saturday. So that's going to be the week that's going to run down. You know what's going to happen for next week. And I'll see you all tomorrow for the NFL recap. Hope y'all take care. Have a good night. And you know, comment down below and stuff like that. You know, like, share, comment, subscribe, yada yada yada. Click the notification bell, blah blah blah. And you know, keep the channel growing. We're almost at 150. Peace everybody.